Hey, this is David with Redline Rebuilds. We are currently still in process on our 1950 Chevy pickup truck, getting that transmission and the motor back into that. But in the meantime, I have another project I need to get moving, and it is this beautiful, glorious straight eight. It's out of a 1951 Buick, uh, super convertible. You may have seen here and there in some of our publications in that. It's a car that I located actually out at Hershey quite a few years ago, and it's kind of been bombing around our shop. Well, we finally got to the point where we're like, all right, uh, we need to clean this up and do something with it. So my task at this is to pull the engine down and go all the way through it. Now, this is a 263 straight eight. It had about 126 horse and roughly 226 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Uh, so not a huge horsepower, it's just a cruiser motor. We're going to do some, call it uh, day two upgrades as far as performance are concerned. It was running when we purchased it, so it should not be stuck or anything along that lines, um, but it was smoking. And uh, so we're just gonna go through it 100% like always and make it pretty. I just took off the valve cover and then that side cover relative to the lifters. And one thing I noticed, you know, specifically going back to a couple of the other motors, this engine is, is fairly clean um, as far as how much it's been sitting, so on and so forth. Uh, whatever amount of runtime it had uh, in its life hasn't been too bad, uh, or at least saw some pretty predictable uh, oil changes. Now, as I go to take this big intake manifold off and the exhaust manifold, I see a couple things here. Uh, first off, it appears that the exhaust manifold is cracked right through here, and then the same thing on the other side. So we had talked earlier about probably putting a split manifold on. It looks like this is gonna be a perfect time to do it because this stock piece, again, appears to be damaged or at least it's got a really, really nasty casting flaw in it and it's symmetric over here, but I'm pretty sure that this is gonna break into two pieces. The other item I see on this side of the block is we have rust coming out of the uh, freeze plugs, both here and here. Now, this one in particular looks like it's been leaking and I'm assuming the other one is leaking as well. Hopefully it's just the freeze plug that is leaking, meaning it maybe it had a little bit of um, water in it enough that it pushed it out and did what it was supposed to do and we're not gonna uncover some huge crack. If we do uncover a crack in here, then it's a perfect time to make a repair. But at this point, I'm just nervous, a little leery, that's all. But here we go, let's get this intake manifold, exhaust, and the huge motor mount off and out of the way. These pistons in general are odd looking. Uh, this is what we'd be considered in today's world a pop-up or a, or a high compression piston. Um, I don't believe it's very high, but there's also, it appears that this is a 40 thousandths over as it's stamped on top. And this particular piston has been doing a couple things. It either, either it lost a ring at some point in time, and that's what's caused this dimpling effect here and it certainly has had a valve um, hitting it. So something wasn't too great in that hole. And as you compare it down here to this other piston, you can see how nice and call it clean. 
Uh, it's an as-cast piston. It appears to be an aluminum piston. And then as we rotate, it is, it is a free rotating motor here. Let's get this back that way. Uh, this cylinder wall here does not look so grand. Uh, it's got a ton of taper in it and it is pitted like crazy. So Mikey's gonna be laughing at us thinking that this is gonna clean up at uh, 60 if 60s are available. So I guess once we get this tore down, we'll see where we're at. We very may, we very may be looking at eight sleeves. That's my unprofessional professional opinion. I showed you where a valve had bounced the top of that one piston. This won't help it any. This chain should be a lot tighter. So this timing chain is certainly stretched out. Obviously we're going to replace that anyway, but it kind of gives you an idea of maybe what happened to the top of that valve. Um, in other words, if, if it's lagging behind and you got a slow spring to boot uh, and a valve that's sticking, that very well could cause some of that problem. Um, but overall, it doesn't look bad in here. It's not too grimy. Something we noticed during our initial inspection of the motor when we were pulling it out of the car was that when you rotated or grabbed a hold of the balancer and kind of spun it uh, or tried to spin the motor over, you get a little bit of a, of a click where the balancer would move, but nothing else would turn indicating that there was something uh, like a, a, an issue between the keyway. So on your crankshaft, there's a keyway, and then this is the key that's in there. And then on your balancer here on the hub, you have a slot, which the key fits into. And what that is for is it locks these together. So when the crankshaft's spinning, the pulley spins because it's locked together. It's not relying on a bolt to hold it tight to the shaft. The bolt is just to hold the pulley from coming off. Uh, this happens to be a slip fit, not a uh, press fit. So what I want to see though is, because I don't see anything obvious right off the bat by looking at these. Let me get this back off. I don't see anything obvious that the, the keyway is wallowed out. I don't see that the, the slot is wallowed out in the crankshaft which is good because this is an expensive repair. This key is tight inside of there. So what I want to duplicate is what we saw in the motor. Now you see right here, there's a witness mark. This does not go in all the way because you have that uh, uh, pulley, or um, sorry, you have the gear for the timing set that's on this end here. So this pulley only goes in about a little bit back, right about in here. Now, what I want to see is, what am, I, what am I finding? Okay, so I have, when I rock this, it might be hard for you guys to see, I have just a little bit of a tick to it. So there is some slop there. So what I'll have to do, and I don't see, it's probably, most likely it's the key is just wore on that top edge. And we'll be able to see it when we pulled the keyway completely out, uh, which maybe we can try to do that. But we'll, uh, We'll have to inspect this, make sure that this keyway here is not, uh, uh, like I said, wallowed out. So what we'll do is we'll take and ultimately we'll measure this before we go back to the assembly side of things. We'll get this measured out and make sure it mics in as tight to this as possible. But that's something you should check on, I'll say all of them, because you do not want this rocking around um, because A, your timing is going to be a bear to try to get set. if you have a timing mark on this balancer, which this one, particular one, does not have. It utilizes the flywheel, but also, you don't, this is a balanced piece, so if that balance is getting changed relative to the indicator marks, you're gonna add some harmonics to the engine that you probably don't want.
Looks like it's on the balancer side of things. This doesn't appear to have any ridge or into it. One thing that's typically critical as far as when you remove the rods and piston assemblies from the crankshaft is to label each assembly relative to the cylinder it's in. So for instance, one, two, three, so on and so forth. Now this motor has been apart based on those 40 thousandths uh, over pistons. The other thing I'm noticing is, for instance, this rod is actually has been labeled number six, but it is in the three hole and number two as a for instance doesn't have any number on it. So something went awry with this motor at some point in time. What I'm gonna do right now just to document how it's been assembled as is, is I'm just gonna go and, and put a one through eight on the end caps and then I'll decide later on if I need to swap them around in some fashion. But I believe once you go through resize everything and it's, and it's one rod per journal, that really that whole mixture isn't an issue um, other than if you had a different piston or something along that lines. Now, so let me get this last one done here. Yeah, And then eight. Ah, <laughs> uh, at any rate. Okay, sometimes it does, it, sometimes it just goes that way. So, Something else that we've noticed as we're rotating this around is a creak, which I'm really curious to see what it is. I'm guessing it's either a ring, but I don't know how, and, but most likely I think it's the rod bearing. Uh, but here, let's, let's take a listen for it. It sounds like, you know, you have metal on metal doing the creak. It might be number two, but it's either one or two has an issue as far as it should not make any noise. So that's something that we're going to watch for as we take it apart, see if we can find out what it is. But let's proceed with the time lapse, get number one piston up. That's it with exception of some plugs on the sides. Yeah, oil gallery plugs that we could heat up and pop out. If you want to see a little flame, might as well. We'll let time lapse finish up. And that is our Buick engine completely tore apart, ready to go to the machine shop.